allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And to the Christian flag, we say, I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for the kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. To our Bible, we say, I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, we're all going to sing along now. And if you know this song, join us and let's become one voice and worship this morning. Amen. Over the mountains and the seas, your favor runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, and I will daily lift my hands. For I will always sing of when your love came down. I can sing of your love forever. I can sing of your Sing of your love forever. I can sing of your love forever. Over the mountains and the seas, your favorite. With love for me, and I will open up my heart and let the healer 
In Proverbs 29, verse 22, it says, It is better to be slow-tempered than famous. It is better to have self-control than to control an army. So how do I control my anger? God got angry, didn't he? Jesus got a little upset at them in the temple. He tossed them out. I think he even said, says, you sons of vipers. I don't know how you take that. But, you know, that's pretty close to saying, hey, you've you got problems. But when you call you a son of a viper, you know, hey. He even told Peter, get his behind me, Satan. We can't avoid anger. It's going to happen. But we need to learn to control our anger. We must learn how to manage our anger. Uh, quit making excuses and justifying your anger. That's just me. I just blow up. I, that's who I am. I, you're just going to have to deal this. This is how God's made me. None of you ever said that, right? Besides me. I, I love it. Have you ever been in a, a squabble with your wife? Or, or your, your husband, and you're, you're bickering, and you're getting loud, and all of a sudden the phone rings. Hi, this is Don, man. Help me. <laughs> so don't tell me you can't control it. <laughs> don't tell me you so I just can't control myself. All of a sudden the phone, yes, so I'm doing wonderful today. Thank you for calling. <laughs> Come on. See, we control what we want to control. We let go of what we want to let go, and we act the way we want to act. Because we're selfish. The bottom line is this. I must admit that I have to resolve my anger issues. I must admit that I can control it with God's help. That's why God put Philippians 4.13 down there. For I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. Romans 8.20 All things work together for good to him who love God and call according to his purpose. And when I say I can't, it means I'm telling the world I don't want to. I used to come up, I can't do that. I can't. He explained to me that I can do it and I will do it. And the methods that he used is some of these kids out there on the street needed them on them. Okay, whatever was close to him, that's what he used to get my attention. That said, can't, the old saying, I don't know if you ever heard this, can't ran off and got ate by the hogs. That's an old southern saying. I don't know. I never understood it. But what he's saying, my grandpa would say, when you tell me you can't, he says, you're telling me you don't want to. You haven't even tried yet. I can't leave my room. <laughs> I can't do this. Homework is so hard. Oh, what you told me right there is you don't want to be obedient. When I say I can't control my temper, it's just how God made me. Not true. Huh? God didn't make you to be a jerk. You're just a jerk. Own up to it. So it is better to be slow tempered than to be famous. Now, listen, just because you can get louder somebody doesn't mean your answer is better than the other person. Yeah. So what, what we need to do is realize the cost of anger. Number two, realize the cost. A hot-tempered man gets into all kinds of trouble. Proverbs 22, 29, 22. I can get more trouble by just blowing up. You know, if you just take that anger and put a D in front of it, it becomes danger. And you become dangerous to yourself and to others around you. You're dangerous to your reputation or your witness for Jesus. You just damaged it. Acting and talking like a I was troubled. I was troubled, troubled, troubled. Now, I didn't care for some of the lady's rulings that she made while she was on the Supreme Court. I didn't care that. But we should have never, ever, as Christians, said, oh, how's, it, how's the weather down there? How do you glorify and justify that you're happy that someone busted hell wide open? That made me angry. That's wrong. We should be brokenhearted that we did not reach her for Jesus. Amen. We should be sad that one person went off to hell because we didn't do everything we could. And we don't even know what she said on her last breath. We don't know how she reacted when she knew she was taking her last breath. I have been with several people on their last breath ask God to come into their life. We don't know who she is. And we as the body of believers are putting these men on Facebook and social media dogging her. 
That is sad, church. Now, don't get me angry. <laughs> I need to resolve it, understanding the cost. People with hot tempers do foolish things. We say things. Our reputation, we, we act out. You know, anger can kill you. And we'll talk a little more, but, but what are you doing to your body? When you're that upset, your blood pressure goes off, you're, you're, the veins start sticking out of your head. You ever see anybody get really mad? Their face gets red. Turn it into the Hulk. I worked hard to get rid of that body. But listen, we need to accomplish, understand when we do get angry, what it's going to cost us. Anger causes mistakes. Proverbs 14, 29. Hot tempers cause arguments. Proverbs 15, 18. Look at Proverbs 11. Or uh, Proverbs 14, 17. People with hot tempers do foolish things. I read that earlier. And then Proverbs 11, 29 says, The, the fool who provokes his family to anger, resentment will finally have nothing with wild love. And it says, dads, do not cause your children to go into wrath. I think you should say the same thing for the kids, too. That we can set each other off, huh? So why do we not understand and realize the cost? It destroys relationships. Because what happens when you're angry, you will say things you wished you never had said. And you can never pull them back in. You'll make a fool of yourself in front of people you wish you hadn't done that. And you give Jesus a black eye. And then what happens is, we want to go on and say, I'm sorry. That, I, I didn't mean to blow up like that. Well, it's because you didn't know how to control it. You didn't know how to manage it. So what happens, you don't realize the cost of what you've done to people. Remember the old saying, sticks and stones may make my bones, but you know, names will never hurt me. It's a lie straight from the devil. You can scar people with your words. It takes years of therapy and healing for some people to figure that out. So it's number three. It says, let's reflect before reacting. We were talking about this with every action. There is a reaction. But the Bible says we are to not react, but to act out the love of Christ. Look what it says here in Proverbs 29, 11. It says, a stupid man, thanks God, Gives free reign to his anger. A wise man waits and lets it grow cool. Just chills out. We need to reflect before reacting. <clears throat> How do you control your anger? When I was in school, they told me, you need to count to ten. <laughs> no, ten wasn't enough. I needed to count to 100. It says that you were just, you just need to chill out. What it's saying here, you to, just to be calm. Proverbs 19 11 says, a, what? a man's wisdom gives him patience. Remember, to have patience, you're going to go through trials and tribulations. And so when we go to this, we understand that patience, you have to ask ourselves, how am I going to keep from reacting when I'm getting upset? Ask yourself, why am I angry? What do I want? And how can I get it? Why am I angry? Well, usually there's three things that really make a person, when they're angry, what causes it. Is it you're hurt? You're afraid? Or you feel threatened? Or frustrated because you're not being heard? Uh, so why are you angry? Ask yourself, when you start getting upset, what is it? Are you, are you frustrated? Are you feeling threatened that you might lose something? Are you hurt? You know, like uh, a few years ago, well, yeah, a lot of years ago, I was, uh, for my 30th birthday, I was up putting a, a roof on the church over in Norwalk, and I had one of those uh, framing hammers, you know, the kind of corrugated, and uh, 
I'm hitting the nails, and all of a sudden someone says something, and I turn and look, and I hit the wrong nail. And this Baptist started to speak in tongues. I was hurrying, and so when I was hurrying, now I wanted to lash out. You know whose fault it was? That stupid hammer that God made. That thing went off the roof. I'm like, you know, and I'm trying not to say bad words in front of all the other men up there on there. And I got this thumb that is just completely gone. It took the whole nail off. And maybe you've been like Keith, working on a car, and your little bitty hands don't fit with his foot, and you slip and you bust the knuckle. And what kind of words come out of your mouth? Thank you, Jesus. I always didn't need that knuckle anyway. <laughs> Yeah, no. I don't like these Japanese cars and we start blaming all the cars we got. And we Right? Are, are you? When I was younger, if it broke and I hurt myself, I would kick the side of the car. I would put more dents in it. I would throw the tools. I would say all kinds of things. But I'm the only one to act like that, right? But was I hurt? Yeah, I hurt myself. And I lashed out. And I'd say things and I would do things that weren't right. Sometimes I was afraid. When I was growing up, I got in trouble a lot for fighting. I didn't realize until later on what was the cause of this. Uh, in the fourth grade, I lived with my grandparents because my mom had started dating a new gentleman. His name was Don, and I did not like Don. Because see, my real dad's name was Don. And he was coming into our life, and I was now mad because he's replacing my hope and my desire was for my parents always to get back together. And so what happened, I became angry. But what happened with that, my anger, my mom put me in sports to help control it. In the sixth grade, I fought every day. In high school, my coach called me a contact maniac. It didn't matter what we were playing, I would run you over. <laughs> we played hockey in the gym, and I would slide and cut you down. We played softball and the poor person at first base if I didn't get a good hit got ran over if they were waiting too long and we could be playing volleyball and I would do everything I could to spike it in your face and my college coach says I need to be locked up in a cage and only let out on Saturday nights <laughs> I walked around angry I was frustrated and upset I was angry what I was losing I had this hope and desire and dream that my parents would get back together and this guy comes in and he's blowing up my dreams. He's blowing up my whole life. And I walked around mad for a lot of years. I was mad at him. Not mad at my mom, it wasn't her fault, it was his knucklehead's fault. He's the one who showed up. I was so mad I left, I wasn't living like my grandparents, so I told him. But finally, I grew up. Finally, I got to sit down and talk with him. Finally, we became best friends. Finally, I got to baptize him. Finally, I got to tell him how sorry I was for the way I acted and what a jerk that I was. See, we can lash out at other people and blame it on them, or we can take responsibility. What happens when you back an animal into a corner and they're afraid? They will attack you. See, I was afraid this guy was coming into our lives and tearing up our world, that I was hoping someday would be reunited. And so I walked around angry. I get frustrated, and we talked about road rage. Yesterday, uh, I, am, I am so anal with time. Uh, we were supposed to meet someone, and, and I love my wife dearly. And if we're supposed to be there at 5, we leave at 5 to 5. And so as I drive to get there, I'm going along, and I'm doing about 60, and the lady in front of me pulls out, and she's probably doing about two miles an hour. <laughs> so I'm a little frustrated. And uh, I started to explain to that lady she needed to give me some kind of sign, and she shouldn't be acting. And I wanted, again, I want to know where she got her driver's license and all that. My wife, Lindor, says, why do you get so frustrated? How is she supposed to hear you? Don't you think you should be more understanding? You know, and I stereotype drivers that had to be a woman and it had to be an Asian woman and, you know, and there's a lot against that. And again, I'm not being racist, you know. 
uh, I just live in Buena Park, or real close. <laughs> and the trouble is, I was frustrated. I was trying to hurry to get there, and, and I know that the Beach Boulevard goes down to two lanes now, and it's 25 miles an hour, and I, I don't really, I, I do like that speed limit. <laughs> <laughs> and I try to buy, oh yeah, uh, if I say I don't get angry, and I tell you, you tell me you don't get angry, you're a liar too, so okay. <laughs> uh, but she kind of let me say, you know, no, I shouldn't be talking to other people in cars that can't hear me. But it kind of helped me though, you know, I had to bend it out, I had to just, uh, you know, explain that I was frustrated. So frustration or anger comes from either being hurt, Frustrated or afraid or fear. And when you figure that out, what is it? Why am I angry? Am I hurt? Did I just hit myself? Or did something drop something on my toe that, you know, and, and, and what do I want to get out of? Am I angry because I'm afraid about something? I'm about to lose something? I'm about to forget something or did something wrong? My patience becomes very short when I'm angry. Maybe I didn't have enough sleep the night before, right? We can justify all kinds of reasons why. But when you lash out at people with your anger, it's never justified. We need to take actions and do the proper steps. So ask yourself, why am I angry? And what do I want to get out of this? Because everything that you're going through is a teaching moment from God. Because if you pray for patience, you're going to have trials and temptations. And you're going to ask God, okay, what are you trying to teach me through this moment? Why am I here right now? And why do I feel like I feel? And how can I, or what can I get from it? So, we need to resolve it. We need to realize the cost of it. And then we need to reflect why we act the way we act. But here is some of the things we need to understand. We need to release my anger appropriately. Because you are going to get mad. You are going to get frustrated. You're going to get upset. And you need to how to expend that energy because it is true energy. In Ephesians chapter 4, 26 says, If you become angry, do not let your anger lead you into sin. It says, King James says, Be angry and sin not. See, being angry is not a sin. When you get angry and you sin, that's the trouble. And people say, Oh, I don't know. You know I don't get I don't get I, I love these people who say, we never fight. Do you guys live in the same house? <laughs> we never have a cross, cross word with each other. Tell her what room she living in. Because that's not true. Because, you know, you put two people together, there's going to be a difference of opinion. You put three in, and man, there is really going to be some difference. God gets angry. He gets frustrated with his people. You think he ain't ticked off of the United States right now? Yeah. Hello, West Coast. Where's all these fires? Oh, the people are lighting them. They're just uh, climate change. It's okay. You know. Yeah, it's called. Let's take care of vice. Not you guys can't have plastic straws, but we can't do the weed the, the, for it. Growing up, uh, and me and Keith, we had you know control burns, and we had forest cleaning. They cut the tree down. We can't cut the tree down because that little mouse lives there now, and you can't do that. And that's what the owls for to eat the mouse. Don't get me started. <laughs> Too late. Are you angry? No, I'm not <laughs> angry. I'm happy that God has made all this stuff. But how are we going to do that? It says, if you become angry, don't let it lead you into sin. Rather, we need to admit that we are upset. We need to admit that we are struggling. Look what Proverbs 29 says. A fool gives full vent to his anger, but a wise man keeps himself under control. How do you keep yourself in control? It is not wrong to be angry. You have a right to feel hurt, frustrated, and upset. What you do with that, that's the whole problem right there. That's the whole story. How you relate and how you react to other people and what you intend to do with those results is what you need to understand. So if I release my anger properly, I will conversate or talk to people and say, hey, you hurt my feelings, right? And sometimes we must separate a little bit. That's why the Bible says, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Uh, when you're mad, it's a good time not to start to discipline your kids. When you're mad, it's not a good time to start explaining to your wife why you shouldn't be late. When you're mad, well, she's on Facebook Live probably, huh? <laughs> <laughs> At least she's not here today. Yeah. 
Yep. But if you just blow up every time you do this and you lash out at people, how close are you going to be to people? People don't want to be around a jerk. People are around a person that's always mad and upset and, and blowing up in front of everybody. Debbie Downer. Yeah, no one likes a Debbie Downer. But think about this. No, no, no. Don't double it. You're doubling, Debbie. You know. But oh, you're not supposed to hit people when you're mad either. So okay, let's get that right. If you're full of anger, you need to release the anger. But how are you going to release it properly? You need to talk about it. What made you that way? What caused that to trigger in your life? Was it an action somebody else did? It was a feeling that you had and you repressed. Uh, there's this idea that everybody's full of anger and they just need to release it. They, you know, they, they say, scream. I don't remember, you guys, I know it's a rated R movie, but there's a scene from uh, Analyze This. Uh, Billy Crystal's talking to uh, uh, Bill, uh, uh, and he's a gangster, and it's Robert uh, De Niro. He says, when I'm angry, I just hit the pillow. And he says to De Niro, he says, just, are you angry? Oh, I'm angry. He says, well, hit the pillow. He pulls out his gun, bam, 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 bam. Shoots it, you know. And he uses some explicit words and said, okay, I hit the pillow. And Billy Crystal said, well, how do you feel? Well, I feel better. Yeah, that ain't going to work. You just, just can't go around hitting pillows and going to release all your anger. It's not really going to happen. What you need to do is figure out what's caused it, then figure it out, and then start giving it back. So what do I do? How do I do this? There's three things you need to do. You need to re don't repress it. If you repress it, and you hold it on, and it's going to come out in your body physically, mentally, you're going to have high blood pressure, you're going to have headaches, you're going to have ulcers, uh, you're going to have backaches, all this stuff is going to happen to you. And your stomach, when you start holding that stuff in, you try to repress it, it's going to come out in other ways in your body. So you need to understand that you have to have the right attitude, the right mindset. And then you don't suppress it, uh, that's the Pollyanna, like, oh, it really wasn't that big of a deal. Yes, it was. If it hurt you, it made you feel afraid or frustrated, it was a big deal to you. And you need to understand, if you try suppressing it, why were you hurt? Why are you fearful? Why are you frustrated with it? You need to talk about it. You need to discuss it. And But one thing you don't need to do with your anger is express it. If you go around expressing your anger, you're going to have problems. And that problem is going to happen by hurting other people. Uh, we need to repatter our mind to get rid of that. So how do you do that? And Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says this, by the transforming, by the renewing of our mind. Garbage in, garbage in. I guarantee if you go home today and you turn on news or any of that stuff, you're going to get frustrated and upset. I have not turned the TV on for that kind of stuff. My wife watches all these rehab shows and, and wants me to rehab everything. And uh, I need to be rehab first, I think. So, but, uh, And we're on two different levels when it comes to that stuff. And, and so she gets frustrated because she says one thing and I'm not hearing what she's saying. And, and so what happens is we've got to renew our mind. We surround ourselves with people that will help us keep ourselves in. If you're walking around, people who are mad and angry all the time. You're going to be on the streets, you know, protesting with people who are mad and angry. What they, and now they have legit said that there is injustice has been done, but what they're doing and how they're doing it is wrong. What they're doing and tearing and burning up and, and destroying and killing people is wrong. They have a right to their anger that there feels there's been injustice. And I believe that, and they, they should be able to express that. Truth is this, most people who are angry are insecure. Most of us are irritable. <laughs> hey, once a month this guy is happy with biscuits and gravy. It's always keep giving biscuits and gravy and we're good. When a baby's crying, you don't go, ah, why are you crying? You nurture it. And you 
hold it and you comfort it. Why are you upset? You bring warmth and security to it. My problem is I am a very insecure person. I didn't realize how insecure until I started doing this message and, and talking with my wife. My insecurity is I feel inadequate every time I step up in this thing. And I've been doing this for 29 years. And I still don't feel confident in breaking his word or sharing his word. And I've been doing it almost every morning trying to share And I still feel inadequate and insecure. We have confidence in you, Pastor. I have confidence in Jesus because he is going to complete the good work he started with in me, amen? And that's in Philippians, and that's the only thing I have. But I, I walk away feeling like, that was the terriblest message I ever had. And, and because of playing sports all my life, you always went back and you relived the game. I can't relive it. It's like I can repeat picture all the plays in the game and stuff. And I don't know. I, just, I, I am so insecure when it comes to this. And, and it, so sometimes I get irritable and frustrated. And then you know who you take that stuff out on? Not your neighbors. The family, the wife, your kids. You're short with them. And so instead of reacting to situations, we need to learn to act out the love of Jesus. And I fall short. Matter of fact, probably one of them had to take a, a chip for being angry. I was like, I don't have a problem with anger. So, I don't even like these messages. Whose idea was this? <laughs> <laughs> I find myself getting ticked off for no reason. That's my own insecurities. It was so cool to grab the baby yesterday and she sing happy birthday. She's like, and that's why I want to walk around happy and clapping all the time, right? But life things happen to us. People pull in front of you at two miles an hour. <laughs> it happens. But I need to understand that God wants me to transform my mind. And when you read down further, that's the perfect, the good and perfect will of God. That you be not conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your minds. And that's what God's saying through his word. Listen, you don't have to act out like the world. You don't have to treat people like the world. You don't have to do those things. Can you imagine yourself not being all upset with someone all the time? Is there anybody that, and I said this before, who would walk in to church service that you'd be so angry if they showed up that you would either want them to leave or you would leave? You know, they probably know that you have a problem with them. <laughs> Think about that for a second. Who do you avoid that you don't want to talk to? You need to start talking to God. You have anger issues. You know. You've probably been hurt. You've been, something's been said. Uh, they've done something, and it's but you're holding a grudge, and you're holding it against them. I'm going to give you a couple chapters to read this week. Ephesians chapter 1. And then one of my favorites is Romans chapter 8. Read those this week, and they will help you with your anger. They will help transform you by the renewing of your mind. Getting into the Word of God will change you. And I have been so lucky that through this uh, time that we have been in this pandemic and this 14 days to slow the curve, six months later, it's really helped me to get even more deeper into the Word. Like I said, I've been doing like live Facebook every every morning, trying to do go through it most of the time when I'm able, uh, going through different books. And it's just, just I fall in love with God's Word even more now. And what we've been going through is just crazy. So what do I need to do? I need to relate to people who are patient. I need to be around people who are calm, collective, and cool. Right. I don't need to go hang out with the crowds that are protesting right now, okay? okay. Proverbs 22, verse 24 says this, Do not make friends with hot-tempered men, a hot-tempered man. Do not associate with easily angered, with ones who are easily angered, or you may lead, you, or you may learn his ways and get yourself ensnared. And it says the fruit of the Spirit is patience. And it goes with love, joy, and all that good stuff along. Wow. Hmm. I need to relate to people who are patient. Who is patient? Who is patient around you? Who shows patience? Who has positive ideals, positive attitude? Uh, what sort of man thinketh so is he? So if you keep hearing and if people are, are dogging you or are, are making you angry, or get away from them. 
Separate yourself. Government says you need to be home anyway. <laughs> so if you're getting mad at the person in the mirror, then you know what the problem is, right? But the truth is this. You're even known by the company that you keep. Who are you running with? Who are you spending time with? There's three different kinds of people. There's the person that gets angry at the volcano, volcano, blows up. And it just blows all over everybody. And you know, if, when it's all said and done, it feels pretty good. And everybody else is devastated around it. Then there's the powder. Poochie lip. Didn't get his way. He's mad at the world and not talking to anybody. And, you know, and then there's a manipulator. And it's always going to go back to being your fault for why they feel the way they feel and why they're mad at this world. But the bottom line, it's all us. It's all us. Next time your kids get you all twisted and out of shape, been out of shape. <sighs> try to be cool. <laughs> I don't know how that works, but try, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Successful marriages have conflict. They said, you're going to have conflict. But the best marriages are the ones that work through it. The struggles, the upsets, the ins, the outs, the ups and downs. You talk through why you feel the way you feel. And again, uh, word pictures. I was reading a book, it's called The, the Language of Love by uh, uh, Gary Smalley and John Trent. And it starts off talking about John who is doing his doctorate and working at the church full time. And he was preparing for this class. And him and his wife were just going out. He says, here I'm teaching marriage counseling in the church and our marriage is anything but perfect. So we're, we're at each other. He says, one morning, and his wife would always have breakfast. He'd go down to breakfast, and all of a sudden, there's this plate is empty, but there's this book that he had been studying. He said, this is not bacon and eggs. Said, no, it's not. It didn't take you long to figure that out. He says, remember that book? He says that you couldn't put down as you kept reading over and over, and you'd take yourself quizzes, and you, you couldn't get enough of it. You read it back for us, and you were prepared for that term. When that term came up, you were able to take that test, and you passed it with fine curls. Where's that book been, John? And he stopped, and he was using it for a doorstop. <coughs> she goes, I'm that book. So when we were going out, man, you listened to me, you sat right, right, we were right next to each other, and we were kidding, we were talking about our dreams, our hopes, and our desires, and what we want to see happen in life, about our ministries and how things were going to go. I said, John, when's the last time you opened that book? Last semester. And she went, are you done with me? Like you're done with this book. What a word. <clears throat> so when you start getting angry, start talking to each other in word pictures. Trying to say, hey, my wife has to hit me in the back of the head sometimes to get my attention. Because I am so dense and not too bright, all right? And like I said, I played football, okay? I can't help myself. <laughs> but the truth is this. People need to be heard. When they're hurting, they're angry. And they're frustrated. When I read that yesterday, as I was preparing for this and I was thinking, if I put my wife on the doorstep, is that how she feels? She is so patient. Well, you can replace that with God's love. You can replace that frustration by getting to God's word and asking God to reform you and put you around people that will help you and guide, guide you in the direction. I guess today I, I really, my real guess, I've been talking to myself, but I think some of you know what I'm talking about today. Can you put up Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 9? You know, it's not on your notes. 
they replaced my fears, my insecurity, and my threat of losing power. It says, Philippians 4, chapter, chapter 4, verse 6, it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, about, instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He done, has done. Start right there. Start talking to God. Say, man, God, you know, I'm frustrated. I'm upset. I'm hurt. I've been, all this has happened to me. But I'm going to thank you that you brought me this. And verse 7 says, then you experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and the minds as you live in Jesus Christ. Our minds. Remember, we need to transform our minds. We want the mind of Christ. We want to be steadfast in peace. When you're angry and you're upset, you have no peace. All you are is a walking time bomb for some people, ready to go off. And they walk around on eggshells worrying what they're going to say or do to set you off this time. They can hear it going. But we might be that straw that breaks the camel's back in a relationship because of our anger. And destroy that relationship. And verse 8 says, and now my dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. I love it when pastors say one final thing. i got about ten more of them. Okay, ready? <laughs> one final thing. Fix your thoughts on whatever is true. What is true in your life and your relationships? And what is honorable? What is honorable in your relationship? Are you being honorable in your outburst, in your frustrations, and your struggles? In your hurts? Remember, we all have hurts, habits, and hang-ups. It says, and what is right? Think about the things that are right in your life. What is right? There are some things that are amazingly right in your life. But we can dwell on the negative all the time. And guess what? It will produce negative. And negative produces anger. And the result of anger is hurt relationships. Hurt feelings. Frustration. And pure. What is pure in your life? Now look at that little grandbabies. That is the purest thing you can get. And lovely. I hope that I don't put that book as a doorstop. Because see, lovely is my wife to me. Not me always to her. And admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and praiseworthy. Keep putting into practice all you've learned and received from me, everything you've heard from me and saw me doing, and then God of peace will be with you. Do you want peace in your life? Practice these things. How are you going to manage your anger? With a lot of help from God, amen? And having the right people around me to keep me accountable. And having a wife or somebody say, hey, dude, you're blowing it. Let's pray for them. Father, we just come before you this morning, Lord, and we ask you to help resolve my anger issue. Uh, help me bring it under control. Help my temper, Father, that I don't blow up and blow off on people. And, and Father, those, those things I've done in the past, Father, you bring forgiveness. Uh, today I make a new commitment to you, Lord. A fresh start that I will be working the best of my abilities try to transform my mind and wrap it around your word and to live out before you. Father, help me to keep from doing foolish things and saying foolish things and acting out when I'm mad and hurt that I would stop and be patient and wait until I calm down and I share with what you want. Give me wisdom, Father, for the things I do say, but, Father, it would be uplifting and encouraging. Father, I ask you to not repress or suppress my anger, but let me see my anger and then be able to visualize that I had not hurt or say anything that would hurt anybody. Let me not pretend that it's not out there. Let me not pretend that there's no violence in this world. Let me not pretend that the, there's nothing wrong with, with society. But the truth is there is so much wrong right now, Lord. And we need your intercession. I need you to help me. To help me as I commit and confess to you. As I know Psalms 1 says, Search me, O God. Try me. See if there's any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting life. Father, let me transform my mind through your word. Let me react not react, Lord, but to act out the love of Christ when things happen. Father, I ask you right now, let me just take the time to be in your word daily. Let me read Ephesians chapter 1 and Romans 8 this week over and over again that we might see your love, your mercy, and grace. You will help me not to be upset or mad with people. 
that they would see Christ in me. They would hear Christ in my voice. Father, forgive me for I have sinned against you with my anger. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amy and them are moving to Colorado. Not Colorado. Idaho. Idaho. And so we're going to pray with them. We're going to anoint them with oil.